All right, so that's three, I need two more. <laughs> I'm really not good at this. I really need to get a bigger jar, y'all. I guess I gotta invest in that too, huh? friends it is me Alana welcome back to my channel for this video I am doing my January TBR in one of my previous videos I did my winter TBR and I kind of changed up the way that I decided to do TBRs from now on and I will let you know how that TBR ended up going eventually but for this video I decided to do the same thing for this month and Hope it works out. <laughs> Instead of doing my TBR jar full of sticks, I actually created like this cup full of prompts that I will pick from and from there I will um, choose books based off these prompts and hope for the best. <laughs> but I wanted to do something fun and a little bit different just to kind of spice it up so that way I had fun filming my TBRs again. So I'm hoping this will help. So um, with this, I I'm just going to pick out prompts and then after I have all the prompts picked out, I'm going to go ahead and pick out options for my shelf and then come back and we'll talk about them and I'll tell you which books I choose. So I'm probably only going to do five prompts for this video, mostly because I am taking it easy when it comes to TBRs. So I'm going to try and mix these up. I've been like failing because I made such big papers and I probably shouldn't have but my bad okay I'm gonna do this one because it fell out so oh perfect Monet will love this so it is a Marie Lou book so what that means is I own a lot of Marie Lou books especially the first book in a lot of her series but I've never read them and so I need to change that <laughs> To decide if I like her or not because otherwise I have all these books and they're just sitting there when I'm done picking prompts I'll go pull some and we can decide what I will read so next prompt is uh, there's so many papers okay I'm gonna pick from the bottom for the best Ooh, fun. okay so this one is a free choice that means I can just choose whatever I want to read <laughs> I don't have to follow a prompt perfect I'm going to choose from the top because I'm struggling with this. And this one is... Oh, okay. So, read an adult fantasy. So, whatever adult fantasy I have, i got to read. I'll figure that out. I'm going to try and choose from the middle. Uh, okay. We're gonna do that. All right, what is this? Oh, cool. So this one is, <laughs> you can tell I was desperate. Read a sequel, any sequel. So basically I need to read a sequel, any sequel, anyone at all, because I'm so bad at reading sequels. So last one, um, I'm gonna do this one because it's on top, I don't have to worry about it falling out. Okay. Perfect. This one's easy too. So this one is a book gifted to you. So I just have to choose a book that's been gifted to me. All right, so that's that's five. So I'm gonna go pull some books and I'll be right back. All right, I am back with my my books. So let's see, so the first one I pulled was a Marie Lu book. So I have with me Sky Hunter. War Cross, uh, Young Elites, and Legend. So I don't really know which one I want to do. So Legend is, I'll read the synopsis because I don't really even know. Once known as the western coast of the United States, the Republic is now a nation perpetually at war with its neighbors, the colonies. Born into an elite family in one of the Republic's wealthiest districts, 15-year-old June is a military prodigy. Obedient, passionate, and committed to her country, she's being groomed for success in the Republic's highest circles. 
Born into the slums of the Republic's lake sector, 15-year-old Day is the country's most wanted criminal, but his motives may not be as malicious as they seem. From a very different worlds, June and Day have no reason to cross paths until the day June's brother, Matthias, is murdered and Day becomes the prime suspect. Now caught in the ultimate game of cat and mouse, Day is in a race for his family's survival while June tries desperately to avenge Matthias' death. But in a shocking turn of events, the two uncovered the truth of what has really brought them together and the sinister lengths to which their country will go to keep its secrets. Interesting. So that's that one. The Young Elites. A decade ago, a deadly blood fever swept through the nation. Most of the infected perished, but some survivors were left with strange markings, rumored to signify powerful gifts for those who possess them. And though their identities remain secret, this group of survivors has come to be called the Young Elites. The Inquisition Access seeks to destroy them. The Dagger Society aims to find them before the Inquisition Access, and Andalina and Matero just wants to be left alone, but two truths will soon surface. Adelina's powers are far from ordinary, and she is not to be crossed. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds definitely intriguing. Teen hacker Amika Chen works as a bounty hunter, tracking down Warcross players who bet on the game illegally. To earn some quick cash, Amika hacks into the game, only to accidentally glitch herself into the action and become an overnight sensation. When Amika gets a call from the game's creator, the young billionaire Hideo Tanaka, he makes her an offer she can't refuse, and suddenly Amika's whisked off to Tokyo into a world of fame and fortune. But the more time she spends with Hideo, the sooner the lines begin to blur between business and something more, pulling her deep into a sinister plot with major consequences for the entire Warcross Empire. Okay, that actually is very interesting. And last one is in a world broken by war, a team of young warriors is willing to sacrifice everything to save what they love. The Carenza Federation has conquered a dozen countries, leaving Mera as one of the last free nations of the world. Refugees flee to its borders to escape a fate worse than death. Transformation into mutant war beasts known as ghosts, creatures the Federation then sends to attack Mera. The legendary strikers, Mera's elite fighting force, are trained to stop them. But as the number of ghosts grows and Carenza closes in, Defeat seems inevitable. inevitable. Still, one striker refuses to give up hope. Robbed of her voice and home, Talon Konami knows firsthand the brutality of the Federation. Their cruelty first forced her and her mother to seek asylum in a country that considers their people repugnant. She finds comfort only with a handful of fellow strikers who have pledged their lives to one another and who are determined to push Carenza back at all costs. When a mysterious prisoner is brought from the front, Talon senses there's more to him than meets the eye. Is he a spy from the Federation, or could he be the weapon that will save them all? Alright, to be honest, out of the four of these, these two sound the most interesting right now to me. So, I'm going to take out Legend and Warcross. I'm actually going to ask Monet, because she's basically read all of... Marie Blue's books so far, so I'm going to ask her to pick one for me to read and then go from there. Alright, so I just texted her to pick one of these for me to read and I'll go with that and I'll let you know what she responds with. So the next one I pulled was a book gifted to you. So this was given to me by a friend who didn't really want it anymore and I said I would take it because it sounded interesting. And that is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Um, I've heard good things about Margaret Rog Rogerson. I have her arc of Vespertine that I either have hopefully read or want to read at some point. And so I figured um, this would be a fun one to read too. Um, I don't really know much about it, but I know it's also kind of short. So it also sounded pretty good. Oh, and it's signed. Didn't even know that. Let's see. Every enchantment has a price. With a flick of her paintbrush, Isabella creates stunning portraits for a dangerous set of clients. The fair folk. These immortal creatures cannot bake bread or put a pen to paper without crumbling to dust. They crave human craft with a terrible thirst and they trade valuable enchantments for Isabel's paintings. But when she receives her first royal patron, Rook, the Autumn Prince, Isabel makes a deadly mistake. She paints mortal sorrow in his eyes, a weakness that could cost him his throne and even his life. Furious, Rook spirits Isabel away to his kingdom to stand trial for her crime. But something is seriously amiss in his world and they are attacked from every side. With Isabel and Rook depending upon each other for survival, their alliance blossoms into trust, perhaps even love, a forbidden emotion that would violate the fair folk's ruthless laws, rendering both their lives forfeit. What force could Isabel's paintings conjure that is powerful enough to defy the ancient malice of the fairy courts? Isabel and Rook journey along a knife edge in a lush world where beauty masks corruption and the cost of survival might be more frightening than death itself. That does sound intriguing. So, 
this will be it. And next, I have my free choice, which I realized I pulled a lot of fantasy, so I wanted to differentiate it and add in like something that I've been wanting to read for a minute, and that is Rent a Boyfriend by Gloria Chow. I really, really adored American Panda, so I figured this would be a fun one to read too, and I, I was looking forward to this when it came out and when I bought it, so... I hope I really enjoy it just as much. The synopsis is, Chloe and Wang is nervous to introduce her parents to her boyfriend because the truth is she hasn't met him yet either. She hired him from Rent for, for Your Rents, a company specializing in providing fake boyfriends trained to impress even the most traditional Asian parents. Drew Chan's passion is art, but after his parents cut him off for dropping out of college to pursue his dreams, he became a Rent for Your Rents operative to keep a roof over his head. Luckily, learning protocols like Type C parents with her quiet, kind, zero PDA gestures comes naturally to him. When Chloe rents Drew, the mission is simple. Convince her parents fake Drew is worthy of their approval so they'll stop pressuring her to accept a proposal from Hongbo, the wealthiest and douchiest young bachelor in their tight-knit Asian-American community. But when Chloe starts to fall for the real Drew, who, unlike his fake persona, is definitely not rent worthy, her carefully curated life begins to unravel. Can she figure out what she wants before she loses everything? This sounds like it's going to be super cute, but also super funny, so I'm definitely here for it. I pulled an adult fantasy slip, so the one that I chose is The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. Um, I saw this in a bookstore, it looked really interesting, and when I read the synopsis, it sounded really interesting. One thing any librarian will tell you, the truth is much stranger than fiction. Irene is a professional spy for the Mysterious Library, a shadowy organization that collects important works of fiction from all the different realities. Most recently, she and her enigmatic assistant, Kai, have been sent to an alternative London. Their mission? Retrieve a particularly dangerous book. The problem? By the time they arrive, it's already been stolen. London's underground factions are prepared to fight to the death to find the tome before Irene and Kai do, a problem compounded by the fact that his, this world is chaos infested, the laws of nature bent to allow supernatural creatures and unpredictable magic to run rampant. To make matters worse, Kai is hiding something, secrets that could be just as volatile as the chaos-filled world itself. Now Irene is caught in a puzzling web of deadly danger, conflicting clues, and sinister secret societies, and failure is not an option. Because it isn't just Irene's reputation at stake, it's the nature of reality itself. So that sounded really interesting. Um, I like the concept that they're librarians and they're doing something for the library, a secret society. So that just sounds really cool. So I'm here for this. The last one is a sequel. So I really thought about this because I was like, what sequels have been really been putting it off? And that is Arch Enemies which is the second book in the Renegades trilogy by Marissa Meyer. I really have been putting this off, and I don't know why because I really enjoyed the first one, so I'm assuming I'm probably going to enjoy the second one, but again, I've been putting it off for some reason because I'm a procrastinator by nature. But yeah, so um, Renegades is about the society that is run by superheroes and villains, but they're called renegades, which are the heroes, and anarchists, which are the villains. And so it's about um, this boy named Adrian who has been raised by the renegades and this girl named Nova who has been raised by the anarchists who meet and they start to realize that maybe the assumptions that they've been taught about these people could be different. Um, and they each have to heal from past traumas that were caused by both sides um, within their childhoods. So, yeah. It's interesting. I really liked it. I liked that it gave you both perspectives. So you really got to see the inner workings of the Renegades and the Anarchists from Nova's point of view and Adrian's point of view. And so you really don't get a one-sided um, viewpoint of the story and I feel like that really added enjoyment to me. I like the fact that they really explored that um, superheroes and vill villains are not a monolith. They are not just one-sided people. There are more to them. So yeah, I just enjoy that and I'm hoping um, I enjoy this one as well, especially because the way the first book ended, I feel like this one's going to be just as chaotic and I'm really looking forward to that. All right, and then Monet just texted me back. so. She chose Sky Hunter by Marie Lou. So this is the one I will be reading for um, January. So 
Uh, I also have some books I would like to include. So I'm taking part in the Buzzword Readathon that Lala does every year. So the prompt for January is uh, who, where, what, when, why, and how. And so I realized that I don't have a lot of books that start with any of those. <laughs> The only one I could really find is Where Dreams Descend by Janelle and Angelas and Angelas. Um, so I chose this one. So this is what I will be reading. I know this is about like a circus, but that's as far as I've gone with it. And I kind of want to just leave it that way and kind of go in without much knowledge uh, to see if I like it. I know Sal really enjoyed it and I'm hoping that's a good sign for me. And the next book that I would like to try and read in January is um, A Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So this is a spinoff from her From Blood and Ash series. Um, this is kind of like a prequel which explains some of the things that you learn in the first three books of the Blood and Ash series. So I picked this up and I'm hoping I like it. <laughs> I'm definitely intrigued to see where she goes with it. So the books that we're reading in January are, just as a reminder, um, Shadow uh, in the Ember, Where Dreams Descend, Sky Hunter, Arch Enemies, <laughs> The Invisible Library, I'm really not doing this well. Rent a Boyfriend and An Enchantment of Ravens. Oh my gosh, the stack is so huge. But I am hoping that I can at least read a majority of these, if not all of them. Those are the books I will be reading in January, hopefully. Let me know if you liked the video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you're going to be reading uh, this month or what you want to read it this month. Uh, but yeah, if you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section uh, down below. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books and you like them or not. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinions. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. You are awesome flowers in the world full of weeds. And that was an enchantment of rage. What is wrong with me today? Okay, and then and, and that is <laughs> crap, okay.